get our meeting started. Uh, this meeting is a meeting for the Board of Education and public for the purpose of conducting the school's district's business and is not considered a public community meeting. There is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. If you would like to speak, there is a sign-up sheet up there. Uh, first item is we'll call this meeting to order and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please do roll call. Mr. Huber. Here. Mrs. Voorhees. Here. Mrs. Gingrich. Here. Mr. Sell. Here. And Mr. Gilmore is absent. Do I have a motion to set the agenda? So moved. Present. Motion by Mill. Do we have a second? I will. Go ahead, Tom. Mr. Sell. Yes. Mrs. Voorhees? Yes. Mrs. Cambridge? Aye. Mr. Huber? Yes. All right, I'm going to shuffle this around a little bit and give Mr. Hazel a little bit more time to get here. Um, first up, we'll have Mr. Carl Hageman. He's going to be doing a veteran presentation. Now the mayor shows up. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Carl Hageman, and I'm here tonight as a member of this line of veterans of Foreign Wars Post 5713. Before I get started, I would like to uh, recognize all the veterans in the audience. Would you please stand up? Tonight's school board 
is because the board member, one board member, Mrs. Barb Voorhees, made me aware of a story about a student that done, student done, and I also wanted to be, I wanted her to be able to share this moment with him and his parents. So we'll just go to that first. I'm going to read this article that I got. Um, following the plate conference, this is a slide and baseball game on 4-2. Following the plate conference with coaches prior to the start of the game, the slide and high school PA announcer, a high school student by the name of Kasten Eichenauer, finished announcing the starting lineups. Then he requested for those in attendance to please rise for the national anthem. After an extended pause, he announced an apology for technical difficulties that were experiencing trying to get the audio to play through the public address system. In the midst of this delay, delay an easy expected choice would have been to move on and begin the varsity baseball game without playing the national anthem due to the technical difficulties. But this young man thought he would just do something different. This young man picked up the microphone and thought the national anthem has to go on and sung the national anthem at the baseball game. Uh, when this was written, um, we were made aware of it uh, when it first happened, and then Barb thought that uh, somebody should know about it. So it means a lot to us for a young man to take that responsibility on himself, and uh, to be 18 years old, you know, uh, that shows a lot of uh, that shows a lot of uh, respect for the flag. Uh, good parenting, and his grandma's an icon at Salina, and I guarantee you she kept him in a straight line. So, with no further ado, as uh, something we would like to do as a Salina BFW is, um, Cassie, could you come on up? I would like to present him with this American flag. And I hear rumors that he might be going to college. <laughs> uh, there's no rumors Dave's sit, his dad sitting back there. <laughs> so the line of BFW would like to give him a five hundred dollar scholarship. <laughs> he said he's good. <laughs> That's what I told them when, they, when I talk to people too. I said, I'm good. I'm glad none of you were there. But most of you know me. Yeah. I've looked here all my life. Most of you know me that uh, I'm a talker. And if you don't know me, I'm a talker. My brother Kevin, the commander, now the BFW, uh, if you have trouble getting him to say three words to you. So. Second, I want to speak about the relationship between the Salina VFW and the cities of Salina and the schools and the community. In the past few weeks, month, uh, we heard a lot of rumors that there was a lot of uh, trouble between uh, the schools, the school board, and disrespect for veterans and veterans organizations. I can assure you there's no truth to that at, at zero. Um, we have a great working relationship with the school, uh, not only the school board, but the, the principals, I know most of them in here. Um, uh, Mr. Metz, he's a veteran, he told a great story about how they made vehicles out of trash and, that, and gave them to kids, and that story stuck with me uh, over the years. And uh, Mr. Winning, uh, they put on a great show, a great show, at, on fifth and sixth grade for uh, Veterans Day, and it's not—it's not so much. It is Veterans Day, but it's what they do at the end. It's how much the teachers have pride in their family and their loved ones, because every year they show a slideshow of their family and their veterans. And even though they're recognizing us and they're there, they're also recognizing the ones that have come and gone before us, and that are dear to their heart. Um, Mrs. Elsenstein is not here with us, but she puts on a great breakfast every year. Her and her staff and the students, and I hope most of you have been there. Every Veterans Day we go there and they feed us. And Last year, if you were there, um, you'll know that uh, we gave her an award from the BFW for all that she does for veterans. And 
Jeff Forkamp is not here tonight, but Jeff and I have a great relationship. Um, I asked Jeff if they could uh, cut the trees down in the football field, and that's because you can't see the flag because the trees are growing so high. Well, they couldn't get the trees cut, but he moved the flagpole to the other end so it's out in the open. So, you know, that means that's the world to us. When the school calls, there's I don't know who the ladies are. They call from where I believe the Head Start is at. If it's the where the play building is, what that building called? The Ed Complex. Yeah, complex. They call and say, "Hey, um, the school, we need a new flag." So that's our personal responsibility that we volunteer to do. Is we donate five flags to make sure every school has a new one anytime they need it. And the mayor will tell you we donate 200 flags to the city of Salerno. And because those ones you see down Main Street, those come from the VFW. So the community as a whole, the school as a whole, everything, I mean, I have a list of things I could go on about. But I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. The Salina Band. The Salina Band, when we need them, they're there. It doesn't matter if it's school year or summer. I call them, I say, we got an event going on, they're there. Kids are passing out in the summer, like, you know, they're dragging them off. They're still there. Started with 24, we might have 21, but it still goes on. And the project closest to my heart, the last thing in this subject is, the project closest to my heart is with Mrs. Duncan, kindergarten through second. Four years, it would be five years now, but as my first year as commander, Mrs. Duncan and I uh, partnered up, and we started the backpack program to make sure that every kindergartner through second grade gets to uh, eat over Christmas break. And we know... You know, we don't try to signal anyone out, but you know who is who. And we want to make sure that it's open to anyone, anyone who needs food. We want to make sure that if no one in this room has ever went hungry, then you're lucky. But I would never want to see a kid go hungry. And I just talked to, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. Corey Arms. Corey Arms in third and fourth grade. And we'd like to try to extend that to, through fourth grade next year. And i got to give credit to the bus drivers because these are little kids. And a lot of times, there's not parents there to help them get off the bus. And I know it's a tough day for the bus drivers, but they do what they do what they can to make sure that that kid's taken care of. So I appreciate the bus drivers. And I'm going to take my hat off for the next one because I'm not a member of the VFW right now. The third one I want to talk about is will be brief. I am a citizen, taxpayer, registered voter of this community. I ask that we, this community, come together and vote for the school levy. I'm a father of a three-year-old. I know I'm 48 years old, but I do have a three-year-old. And I love tradition, but not when it comes to certain things, like attending the same school your grandmother and your father went to. Let's break that tradition. I'm about tradition in the military. I'm about tradition with the VFW. But three or four generations in the same school needs to stop. So we may have the difference. We may have differences in this room, but I hope we can all agree on what we want is the best for our children. Thank you. God bless America and everyone in this room and the troops that are at serving today. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. That was nice to hear. Uh, next up, we will have for Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, Mayor Hazel and Sheila Bobzell. Um, I'm going to speak tonight about Teacher Appreciation Week and National Teacher Day 2019. Americans in cities and towns all over the nation will soon be celebrating National Teacher Day on Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. The celebration is part of National Teacher Appreciation Week, which runs May 6th through the 10th, with special events honoring educators and will be happening right here in Salina Schools. The celebration supported by the National Education Association and the Salina Education Association and promoted first by the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and the National Parent-Teacher Association has two main goals. It wants to thank our teachers for their commitment to students 
and for their work to create great public schools for every student and to encourage talented and committed individuals to consider the rewarding and intellectually demanding profession of teaching. As um, the person in charge of the CEA Professional Relations Committee, I just want to let you know what we're going to be doing to promote the week. During May 6th through the 10th, we will see colorful posters on the walls. We will hear special announcements by the principals. We will have special emails to the staff prepared by Betsy Kreitz. We will have CEA donating $50 to each school library for books to add to the collections for the children. And we will encourage donations to our CEA scholarship fund. And we love this group. CCSCO, the Salina Combined School Community Organization, will provide lunch one day during the week to the staff at the primary, elementary, and intermediate schools. Thank you, CCSCO. And now, please welcome Mayor Jeff Hazel to the podium, as well as Dr. Smithson for an important presentation. Once again, we're here, Doctor. Very good to be here tonight. Um, I guess first of all, I would tell you while I do these proclamations, I don't do them lightly. Um, I truly, on behalf of the city and myself, I appreciate the Swine Schools. I appreciate the teachers and the people that do the things that us as parents don't always have time to do. They're not the babysitters for the kids, but they are the ones to give them that instruction so that they can turn around and be productive members of our society. So whereas all the citizens of Salina, Ohio, do stand firmly committed to promoting education as the catalyst for our students' future academic success, their preparation for America's jobs of the future, and their ability to compete in truly a global economy. And whereas the administrators, teachers, and educational support personnel of the Salina City School System has provided significant leadership in the area of education of our youth, grounded in principle that educational investment is the key to the community's well-being and long-term quality of life. Now therefore, I am proclaiming as mayor of the city of Salina, and I call on the community of Salina to assure that all former and present administrators, teachers, and educational support personnel receive the recognition that they so richly deserve. And I very boldly proclaim this, and I endorse May the 6th through May the 10th as Teacher Appreciation Week, and Tuesday, May 7th, 2019, as National Teacher Day. service presentation as Deb Schroer. Well, I'll tell you about our cafeteria. Every three years we have an administrative review. That OD comes into the administrative review. And so this year here, they only had to go to one cafeteria because they have five buildings. They have to go to one cafeteria. But during that administrative review, they don't only just check our, oh, what we're serving, they also check we do a direct certification every year to make sure we have that direct certification completed. And I have to run that three times a year. And they also check that I do the verification. We have to check 10% of our permit use applications. We have to check 10% of them. So they check that. And they also check for that our civil rights, that everybody has a civil rights training every year. And we have a civil rights poster in all the cafeterias, a justice for all one. And they also check for the SFA or monitoring side, where every year I need to go to make sure that they are serving the proper things and not discriminating any children. And we also check our local wellness policy, which we check yearly. And everything that we sell a la carte <laughs> it has to be a smart snack compliance. So we have to make sure that everything is a smart snack compliance. And they also check on a professional standard. They have where I have 15 hours of CEUs every year. 
The managers, we have five managers. They have to have 10 hours of CEUs every year. And anybody four hours or less, they have to have four hours of CEUs every year. So they check that. And then they also check for our school breakfast program to make sure everything is in compliance with that. And so a lot of things they come in and check. And then they check over all of our menus and all of our production sheets which every cafeteria lady will have to do a production sheet every day to how much they serve or how much, that everything matches up because we are getting uh, government dollars. And then they also check a HACCP plan for us. I could go on and on and check a lot of different things, but they came and it was uh, Darlene Holt. She went to the Salina Intermediate School and she was very impressed with all the knowledge that the cafeteria staff workers knew and their, their reimbursable meal, how they knew it, their production records, the cleanliness of the kitchen, the freezer, the storeroom, they checked everything and very impressed that we got an excellent review on that. So we're in compliance, we're good, clean cafeteria, and we all know what we're doing. And we do have a great cafeteria staff. But then also, um, the start of the school year this year, this, in 2018, we did get a smoothie machine at the high school. And we have a strawberry banana and a mango pineapple smoothie that we offer every day. And it seems to be going pretty well. We didn't get that in until October. So now it seems like we're selling a lot more and the weather gets nice, but I thought the smoothie machine is going well. And then also, every year we get commodity dollars, and you get that by the number of A lunches that you serve. That's how you get your commodity dollars. So every year I put money into DOD for the Department of Defense, and they provide us fresh veggies and fruits. So at all the schools, they do have at least three times a week, they have veggie bags that consist of carrots, <coughs> broccoli, tomatoes, cauliflower, celery. And sometimes we do serve a ranch cup with that too, which they seem to take them veggie bags a little quicker to put that ranch cup in. <laughs> and then we did try squash this year. <coughs> that was not a big hit, so I don't know if that's squash or not. And then on our fresh fruit, we do have fresh apples, oranges, strawberries, blueberries, pears, and we must melon, watermelon, do melon, and kiwi. Um, and it's not, you know, every day thing or every week thing. It just kind of so we have enough DOD to go through the year. And then last year, we did start to offer a yogurt lunch consisting of a yogurt, granola, cheese stick, goldfish crackers, carrot sticks, apple slices, and a melt. And that was a big hit with all the students. I mean, that just went over really good. And this year here, all the schools have a salad bar, a salad option. So this year, in March, we thought, well, we'll try to go ahead and do it at the primary school. We didn't know your K through two, or they didn't take salads, so we tried it in March. We thought, we're only going to do it on Monday and Wednesday. Oh my gosh. The first day that we announced that we're going to do that, we had 150 170 salads we had to make on that Monday and Wednesday. Not enough lettuce, not enough tomatoes. So, I don't know. Now we're down to what well, we serve probably 120, 140 yet order every week. So maybe that's something we need to keep intact for next school year. And also, every year I do apply for the fresh fruit and veggie grant. And that there, um, it kind of seems to give back to the, it goes by your school to reduce percent. And we have never gotten it yet, but Try again this year, and you never know, someday we may get that. And I also applied for an equipment grant, and in one year we did get, um, it was like a $21,000 budget oven for the elementary school. And this year here we applied, I hope I get one at the middle school, which they could really use a new oven, but we did not get it, so we'll try again next year. And then for my, uh, the bottom line for the cafeteria, we are not doing uh, very well, but I think our we're a little bit better than what we were last year this time, according to what I have. So hopefully we can get our participation build up and that makes our revenue generate and then everything would be good. And if anybody has any ideas or suggestions that what we can or can't do in the cafeteria to maybe make it more pleasant or anything, because when we have uh, our primary school and we have National School Breakfast Week, they hang donuts from the ceilings and whatnot, so try to get it a little bit more, you know, so. Any ideas or I don't for suggestions on that? And that's all I have. Yeah. Thank all right. You. Thank, you. Thank you. So I'll ask Mr. Benz if he's ever had a fruit smoothie in the cafeteria. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Next up we have Amy Esser for the Head Start.
start presentation. Um, before I go over self-assessment, I just wanted to do like a quick year in review for um, Head Start. So it feels like a jam-packed like three years into one. I don't know about the rest of you folks in education, but this year with the winter and everything, it's been crazy. Um, so um, we are heading towards the final stretch, and so the end of the year always brings about um, different programs and whatnot. So um, last week was Week of the Young Child, which is recognized by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and that is to bring awareness to the importance of early childhood education and those who um, work in the field. So the whole week was full of different things for the kids, but the idea is actually to recognize all the staff um, who work in the field. So we kicked that off actually the Friday before um, with um, an event in the auditorium. We had Congressman Warren Davidson visit and several um, school board members were there and um, Commissioner Homan was there to um, recognize Cooper Family Farms for a generous donation and then also to do our proclamation for We Get a Young Child. So um, that was a big event for us. And the kids had tons and tons of fun all week. So um, also this year we um, built upon some already existing collaborations and partnerships and that's one of the things that's addressed in the self-assessment plan is um, the collaboration that we have currently with the ESC that will continue with Salina City Schools when it comes to providing services for children on IEPs and preschool. And then likewise, the partnership that we have with Salina City Schools for the state-funded ECE grant. Um, because of our ability to partner and collaborate with so many people in our community, both in the private sector and the public sector and social services and education, we were actually recognized by um, the Ohio Department of Ed and Ohio State University as one of the premier um, early childhood providers and got to participate in a research project that they're doing right now about partnerships and collaborations. And um, they're trying to design what this looks like in um, environments to make so that other people can replicate that. So um, that was a very proud moment for me to be able to um, represent this community. So um, what we have, oh, and I wanted to say this. So May 9th, we'll also be recognizing all of our volunteers, our staff, and our students. Um, so if anybody wants to come hang out with us, May 9th, 10 o'clock in the morning, um, will be the AM session, and 2 o'clock in the afternoon will be the PM session. Um, and so we'd like to say thank you to everybody, all of our parents and community people who come in, and then also the kids, you know, if they finish one year, two years, three years, we like to recognize them, and our staff as well. So. Um, I already gave the board a copy of my report um, regarding self-assessment. This is something that's required for Head Start. I have to do this every year, and um, all of, the majority of staff participate in it. And what it is, is you just take a look at yourself as a program and identify the, <coughs> your strengths and things that you need to build upon. So um, I'm not going to read this very lengthy document, but I like to brag about what we do, so I'm going to read the strengths. <laughs> so um, one of the things that's identified as a strength is our um, partnerships and collaboration. If anybody in this community um, touches early childhood, we're working with them um, to help the needs of our families. So that's a huge, huge strength for us. Um, we collect a lot of data. We have lots of data systems that help us. We are a data-driven, decision-making entity, um, which you have to be in this day and age. Um, we have a very strong um, fiscal foundation, um, myself along with the treasurer's office. Um, we complete a community assessment, and actually I'll be, I'm in the process of researching this right now, but it encompasses everything about this community because I have to design a program that meets the needs of this individual community. So I will have that done and probably ready for board approval, um, I would say by August. I'll have that ready to go. So um, I wanted to give special kudos to the maintenance department. Jeff is awesome. Staff love him. So um, kudos to him for a job well done. Um, our transportation. Um, our aging bus fleet, and Carol can attest to this, we have some really old buses. 
I've been able to replace two buses, bigger buses, so we can transport more kids in bigger, more safer, up-to-date buses. They say they ride on the Cadillacs, so I'm excited for them. They get excited when they're like, hey, it's a new bus. Um, training and professional development. I'm a huge proponent of training in PD. We can all learn. We're all lifelong learners. So I make sure I put enough money in the budget for all staff. doesn't matter what, you, what job you do. I think that we can all um, benefit from that. So um, the way self-assessment works is there are obviously some areas in here where we need to um, build upon some areas of opportunity. And I put together a plan and board reviews it and then I review it with staff and we work on it for the next year or so. Some things take a couple additional years, some things we can get done pretty <coughs> quick. Um, but that's the other piece to this. So did you guys have any questions regarding that? You're going to go to Washington after your I went to Washington in January. I have not been back, not yet anyway. I'm kind of waiting to see. 2020 is an election year if you haven't watched any kind of TV. You know that. Um, and so there won't be a whole, whole lot happening in 2020 because they're all busy. Um, but I will go back for another, at least one more trip. I'll be back there in January, if not before. So I'm actually um, going to Chicago tomorrow. Um, for regional events and actually there is um, I'm putting together a team of community members um, Department of Job and Family Services some mental health and I'm hoping someone in the medical field to attend an opioid summit at the end of May um, they are bringing people from all over the nation and Ohio has a seat at the table because opioids are obviously have hit Ohio a lot harder than most people and um, so we are going to be sharing with other states in our region what we have done and try to collect some ideas from them. Um, so that's at the end of May. Thank you, Amy. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Next up we have the uh, co-CEA president, Steve Stewart, Mary Swinger. We have CA, Carrie Coverly has something she'd like to share. Okay. Good evening. I'm Carrie Coverly. I am a high school English teacher and also a graduate, a proud graduate of Salon High School. Um, and I'm here to speak to you as a CA member and probably more importantly as the very proud parent of three students of Salina Schools. I just want to take a few minutes to talk with you about the board's recent um, budget reduction plan and uh, the way I see it potentially impacting our, our school's futures. It's no secret that our district has faced um, an enrollment issue, losing students to both open enrollment and to the College Credit Plus program. While we have not found effective ways to address the open enrollment issue, we have been successful at reducing the number of students leaving the high school campus to enroll in college classes. We've done that by providing quality and instruction and engaging high-level courses that have kept our students on our high school campus. Given our district's challenges with students enrolling outside of our district, I'm left to wonder why the board would pursue anything that will very likely exacerbate this situation. As the parent of a graduating senior, she should be graduating, you're an improver tonight, I believe. <laughs> I want to share with you that my spouse and I have actively encouraged our daughter to take all of her coursework at the high school. Um, that despite the fact that my, my husband is a college professor. She chose to pursue an honors diploma, which requires extra credits in multiple subject areas. She's been able to earn all of those credits right here, enjoying personalized instruction and being able to remain involved in school activities and leadership opportunities. Our son is a sophomore. We're less certain, given the recent reduction plan, that he will be able to achieve what his sister has at the high school. And our third child, my biggest concern, is a fourth grader. We are extremely concerned, given the reduction plan, about her future ability to achieve what her sister has by remaining enrolled solely at Salina High School. We need to keep every student we have. Ideally, we need to attract back students who have left us. The current proposed reduction plan acts in direct conflict to this need, and I just have 
three specific examples um, to share with you this evening. A current student of mine wanted to take a certain English class next year, his senior year. Because of very tight scheduling um, in our, our department, this class will not be offered next year. During a meeting with his school counselor, she asked him which English course he liked to take from his remaining choices. He chose, um, he's choosing to leave the high school campus and take college credit plus. While talking with her, he also discovered that due to the reduction plan, losing high school social studies position, psychology too um, will probably not be offered next year. He needs this half credit for his honors diploma. He decided that he might as well take psychology through college credit plus as well <coughs> since he already has to take English at the college. These are two classes that we otherwise would have been able to offer here rather than paying for books, supplies, and tuition at the college campus. The second scenario, students have recently learned that due to the reduction of a science position at the high school, applied physiology too will not be offered next year. Students seeking honors diplomas need a fourth credit of science. This is a course many use to that end. Students who are interested in a medical career or physical therapy career also take this course as preparation for their professional lives after high school. These students were extremely frustrated and disappointed to learn that this class will not be offered. Many left wondering why even take Applied Physiology 1 here when they could take College Credit Plus and fulfill the requirement. Again, we're sending students away from our campus, paying tuition and book supplies every time this happens. Lastly, due to the reduction of an art position, many students are looking into College Credit Plus to meet their two-semester art requirement. This is required by the Ohio Department of Education. Photography is one of those courses at the Lake Campus that may meet this requirement. In addition to paying tuition, it is state law that the local district must pay for all supplies listed on the course syllabus. And the district does not recoup the cost for supplies, textbooks, fees, etc. The photography course requires a very expensive camera. Salina would potentially have to buy this camera for any student who takes this course, when that student otherwise could have taken their art requirement here at the high school. I would like to see monthly side-by-side -side comparisons of current and future open enrollment numbers and college pre credit plus expenditures if the board decides to move forward with a reduction plan. As a mother, I also worry about more than the bottom line, about more than the financial impact of these decisions on our district. I worry about the potential negative impact to our school culture. If we send away our most motivated, most goal-oriented students, what will happen to our athletic teams? our student council, our national honor society, our band, our mock trial team, our spirit squad. Where will our leaders come from? What will happen to student involvement and school pride? Sometimes the bottom line is not the bottom line. What is the long-term plan for the impact of these reductions? What kind of schools do we want in five years, 10 years, 20 years? When my 10-year-old gets to the high school in five years, Will, will we be able to advise her to take all of her classes at the high school as her sister has done? Will there be an option for her to earn an honors diploma as her sister has done? Will there be clubs and activities for here that her sister has enjoyed? Or will we, like too many other parents, have to decide to enroll her elsewhere or in College Credit Plus for her to be able to achieve the goals she'll set for herself? Is this reduction plan the best approach to doing right by our students and ultimately doing well for our district? Why are we cutting what makes Salina an amazing school district, instruction and academic choice? And why would we make reductions that will likely worsen an enrollment issue that we must turn around? As a teacher, I see these questions as logical for long-range planning. And as a mother, I see these questions as essential for my children's futures. Next up is Carol Anderson with Oopsie. On a less, less serious note, we have 29 school days left. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But we're not counting. people wanting to speak. Uh, we have Carl St. New. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carl St. New. I am a graduate of Spina High School, 
a veteran of the United States Army, and most importantly, I'm an American. As an American, we are all endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Implied is that freedom of speech, guaranteed by our First Amendment. This board's handling of the situation with Mr. Tyler Carden is simply appalling. It's pitiful. It's sickening. You are supposed to be looking out for the welfare and wellness of our young people, not punishing them for following their hearts and standing up for what they believe in. This young man made a very respectful monument to the fallen soldiers who have sacrificed everything to guarantee our freedoms, and you punished him for it. Unfortunately, in today's society, evil people use schools as a target for terrorism. This was not the case. This monument was in no way a threat, a danger to anyone, or against any reasonable school policy or rule. Evidently, there are several administrators that should have sat in on this young man's, on this young man's presentation Pay attention, and quite possibly would have learned something. The battlefield cross is a sacred memorial to the American heroes. This tradition started sometime either during or before the American Civil War, and is still used today. It was first used to mark the graves of the fallen, and now it is used as a symbol for those of us who were still in a combat zone to show our final respects to our brothers. How can any decent American look at a painted Nerf gun with a pair of boots affixed to the barrel and a painted hard hat on the buttstock and see a, death, a dangerous weapon? This baffles me. Not only did you wrongly punish Tyler and tarnish his clean record, you then went a step further. You hid behind some lame privacy clause somewhere that would not let a 12-year Army veteran speak. This after you released Tyler's name in the newspaper. Where was his privacy then? But you didn't stop there. You then made a pathetic attempt to apologize to this veteran. Sir, I would like you to restrain him from being aggravated and angry discussion to us. Boisterous, sir. You can speak your mind, but let's keep it. Keep it calm, please. You then released her name and her home address to the papers. What about her privacy? And yet, for some reason, we still have not heard anything from the teacher that gave Tyler permission, or the administrator that sent him to the office that morning, or the vice principal that wanted to suspend him for three days. Are you about done, sir? Your time is up. I can continue later if you'd like. You only get one time at this meeting. Close. Close. Okay, go ahead. At no point did anyone, the history teacher, the counselor, the principal, or any of you think about Tyler's well-being. Not for one minute did anyone think about Tyler. But again, you didn't stop there. You tried to smear his good name by issuing these non-statements about, we can't talk about that, and you are on here in one side of the story, so on and so forth. And yet, if you go back over the past six weeks, this young man, has story has never changed. Not one word. You can't say that about yours. Every time you turn around, you have another weak, political, cheap excuse as to why you won't make this right. And you call yourselves leaders? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourselves attacking a 13-year-old boy for following his heart and showing you some respect for fallen soldiers? Every one of you up here, after making your resignations effective immediately, need to sit down and do some very serious soul searching. You have brought shame to this community, and I am disgusted. I hope you take this opportunity to make things right with Tyler and the community and realize that the people who will take your seats have a lot of work to do to fix what you, the damage that you have done. Thank you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
response to that, make sure you have all the facts before you start throwing out accusations. He would, he we would love, we would love to speak the truth if we could get the release. Maybe you should push for that instead of attacking us. I think you need to be careful what you say as well, Mr. Cuber. I would like a, a very short response to Carl. Yes, Mr. Sell. I appreciate your passion and your service, and I think all of us up here do. I mean, there were students when I taught that were released from class to play the bugle at a veteran's gravesite service. Never did I stop a kid from leaving my classroom for that, nor would any teacher in the building. But when you said we're hiding behind the fact that there's two sides to this story or something to that effect, I can assure you truly that there are two sides to the story. And I really do wish that we could release information that would support the decision that was made. Never would any administrator in this district board member or teacher ever intentionally disrespect a veteran. And I can tell you that sincerely. Who is looking out for Tyler Carter? This young man had a clean record, never had a problem with anything until this. Who is standing up for him? This, mean, this means a tremendous amount to this young man. This particular I would have to, I'm going to have to stop you there. Your time is up. We have discussed this enough. Okay. But we appreciate yeah, you. We, we do appreciate your service. We do appreciate you speaking. If you would know the full story like we do, it would be a different attitude towards us. So I'd be glad to talk to you later if we get a chance. Yeah. Next up we have Annie St. Newton. You have uh, three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this on? Everyone hear me? I am a 1996 graduate of Salina Schools. I came here with no prepared remarks. However, I will say what I've been saying since this came about. I want to make sure I can see Dr. Schmeezing and Carl Huber. If I could be you for three minutes, this is what I would say. The safety of our students is our paramount concern. No one is going to argue that. In this situation, we have had an error in judgment. We have had a miscommunication of some sort. We are deeply sorry for everything that has happened. Going forward, we would like to expunge Tyler's record. We would like to put a monument on school grounds for bringing this situation to light and honoring our local community members. Going forward, we will be 110% clear as to what's allowed and not allowed. That is an apology. That is simply saying, obviously mistakes were made, let's move forward. However, this school board, and a couple of you in particular, are so prideful, you will not do that. I realize this is not a three-minute speech. I went into two quotes. First quote, no one died from swallowing their pride. Keep that in mind. The second quote is from my sister's first sergeant, and he said, it takes one person at the right time to make the right change. Thank you. share that we do have an addendum to the consensus agenda. Under 6B, we have personnel, a change of contract for Nancy Vanderhorst. Under C, we have a change of contract for Shirley Kittle. And under the board policy and guidelines, number 9, we do have the 5223 policy. Also for our graduate list, we have added five more names for the possible graduation list for the class of 2019. Okay. Tom, you want to go ahead? Treasurer? Oh, 
motion to approve consensus agenda. Madam? Do we have a second? Second. Tom, go ahead. First item I'm asking to approve the minutes of the March 18, 2019 regular session and the March 20, 2019 special Board of Education meeting. Item number two, approve the March 2019 financial summary report showing revenues of 5.3 million and expenditures of 4.7 million. But again, this month's revenues are up because of the property tax settlements, the county level. Item three is to approve the investment control report for March of 2019, showing a balance at the end of the month of over 21.75 million. I'm asking you to approve the SM2 report for March 2019. I'm asking you to approve checks written for March of 2019, uh, just over 4.16 million. Item six, um, asking for approval of participation for funding under the EPA's 2018 Diesel Emission Reduction Act. Whereby the Sly City Board of Education is eligible for $60,000 in rebates against the purchase of three new buses. The three buses slated to be replaced have to be scrapped under the terms of the agreement. Item number seven is to approve proposed enterprise zone agreement for Hall F Manufacturing Incorporated, requesting the county approval of the same and waiving the statutory notice periods. The payment is for 100% for 10 years with a 10 mil payment in lieu of taxes. And then the last item is the acceptance of the following donations $2,000 from the Greater Salina Youth Soccer Club for high school scholarships, $2,000 worth of equipment from Dan Davis for the TriStar Interactive Media students, and $500 from CAP to help with the purchase of an athletic band. Any questions for Tom? I do. Do we know why we're going to get three new buses, I would assume, was that correct? That's correct. Do you know why we have to scrap the old ones? Can't they be used for something? It's because of the diesel emissions. Okay. So are these buses then that we're going to be getting are they gas powered, I would assume? No, they're, it's, just, it's clean diesel emissions. Okay. The, 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 the technology has improved so much, we'll be getting rid of three very old buses. And with buses of basically eighty thousand dollars, we're getting three buses for the price of two and a quarter. So. Okay, that was going to ask the next question: How much are these new buses going to be per the, bus? The last couple of buses we bought have been about eighty thousand. with the assistant superintendent's report. Sir, and under personnel, we're approving the following substitutes for the 18-19 school year. Alan Bills and Marcia Schmidt. We do uh, asking you to approve to accept the resignation due to retirement of Sandy Feltz after 23 years of service. Also approve the resignation of Kyla Stuckey at Head Start. Also the resignation of Virginia Miller in the cafeteria. Then we have a 60-day probationary contract for Roma langen Bellock. A change of contract for Lisa Burgoon. She's going from three hours to five hours at the high school cafeteria. Dawn Gagel, educational aide, has a change of contract. She's requesting two deduct days. And asking you to, again, approve the $1,000 stipend to Brenda Dorner as she does the 2019-2020 school calendar. The addendum under this section was a change of contract for Nancy Vanderhorst requesting one deduct day. Under resolutions, approved to advertise for milk bids for the 1920 school year, authorize the use of the school district owned buses to transport Wright State University Lake Campus on a two hour tour around the lake at a cost of $250 to approve the lowest fertilizer weed control bid of $7,200 from True Green. That's just a one-year contract. 
Here it is to be approved the purchase of three buses through the EPC to utilize the $60,000 rebate program from the EPA's Diesel Emission Reduction Act. Any questions on the assistant superintendent's report? Um, go ahead, Ted. On the superintendent's report under personnel, we have uh, three substitutes we're asking you to approve. Rebecca Head, Samantha Keeling, and Andrew Peel. We have a resignation of Lisa Stahl from the speech and language pathology position. Number three, we're asking you to approve the resignation of Ann Dyer, first grade teacher. Approve the reassignment of Clinton Hirschfeld from high school assistant principal to technology director, effective August 1st. Approve a change of contract for Amy Sutter, art teacher. She's requesting one deduct day. Change of a supplemental contract for Jen Smith going from 0.5 FTE to 0.25 FTE. Along with that, changing the pupil activity contract of Allison Braun going from 0.5 to 0.75. Number eight was to fix an earlier error. Instead of him being head nine, football coach who would be the head eighth grade football coach, that being Joey Braun. And then number nine again from the addendum, a change of contract request from, from Shirley Kittle. She's requesting one deduct day. Under resolutions, approve the class of 2019 graduates. Again, we added five names to that list. Approve the resolution implementing a reduction in force of one administrative level position. Number three, approve the resolution creating a treasurer's administrative assistant position on the executive <coughs> secretary compensation plan. Number four, approve the West Central Ohio Regional Health Care Alliance to do bus driver and van driver physicals for the 1920 school year at $52 each. Number five, approve an overnight trip to Stratford, Ontario, Canada for the high school English department, October 23rd to the 25th. And a resolution authorizing membership in the Ohio High School Athletic Association for the 1920 school year. Under TriStar, we're asking you to approve Thursday, June 6th at 7 p.m. at 1355 Tavell Street in Salina for the annual house auction and allowing advertising for the auction. Number two under TriStar, adopt a resolution to approve change orders as presented for furniture and for a new term lane at the TriStar Career Compact building. Number three, approve of the E-rate equipment and agreement for TriStar 2.0 project with NK Telco. And then under Head Start, we have the Head Start report that is attached. Okay, any questions for panel and the superintendents? How many undergraduate classes here? That's a good question. What's that? Five, Phil? Yes, sir. How many graduating class with an added five? I think it's 193. We had 188. We compared that to last year. Are we down 10 or 15 or is it about the same? Thank you. I also have a question, Dr. Ken. Yes, sir. I see Mr. Hirschfeld is going to move from, I saw this earlier actually, from high school assistant principal to our tech director. Correct. Okay, so that I would assume leaves, and good luck to you in that position. You'll be, you'll be good there. But that does leave a, an assistant principal's position open at the high school, I would assume. That is correct, yes. So we will be posted that. will be posted after this meeting. We're providing that you approve that, yes. Correct. Okay, any further questions? Do we have any items to remove from the consensus agenda? If not, Tom? Mrs. Gingrich? Aye. Mrs. Voorhees? Yes. Mr. Sell? Yes. Mr. Huber? Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of a proposed application for tax abatement through the Salina Reinvestment Area Tax Exemption Program for Mid American Properties. Um, he's asking for 100% for 12 years and uh, on a $5.5 million improvements. 
Um, through further discussions with Mr. Charlson for that property, he has agreed to do an little payment for that 100% abatement, uh, like we have done in the past. I believe I gave you all the letters. So do we have any questions pertaining to that? That number will be fixed for the duration of the abatement, is that correct? Correct. And the abatement time, is it 10 or 12, do we know that? 12 years. Why is it starting here? That's, it gets picked up in 2020. It doesn't actually go on the tax roll until 2021. You pay real estate taxes a year behind. Oh, okay. So you're actually paying for last year. All right. And if there's no further questions, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Go ahead and do a roll call here, Tom. Mr. Sell. Yes. Mrs. Gingrich? Aye. Mrs. Voorhees? Yes. Mr. Huber? Yes. All right, uh, next we have uh, informational items. Uh, per check seller, Salina City Schools will be hosting the OMEA large group band and choir adjudicated event on March 13th and 14th of 2020. I'm assuming that will be here at the high school, correct? This is about, okay. okay. I'd like to make a quick comment regarding that, sort of regarding that. Since it's band and choir, I just want to make a comment. I did not see it, but I heard that the, the play Newsies was fantastic. And I just want to say if anybody in here is associated in any way, congratulations. My wife said it's the best one that she's seen, so yeah. Also, on a note on that, on the play, we had friends from out of town, we had friends from Shawnee and friends from Toledo come to watch the show. They were blown away by the talent of our students. So, it is amazing what they can do on a show like that. If I could just fit in the seats. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the first reading of the board policies. Uh, you want to do that, Ken? Right. Uh, Jim, we don't go through those so much unless anybody has any questions about any of those. But we did add from the addendum um, policy 5223, we are adding that as well. And we also see, as we spoke in the past, about the drug testing students and extracurricular activities. So that piece is on there as well. I'm sorry, the drug testing is, that is not new, however. That's, that's okay. Yeah, that's Second reading, gotcha. First reading. First reading. First reading, yeah. Any questions from the board for the item? Okay. Session. Uh, we need a motion. Yes. 